Section 5.1 is on page 241, talks about interconnected fluid tanks. Suppose we have the following, tank A, tank B, and two large tanks, each holding 24 liters right there. of brine solution are interconnected by pipes as shown so you have a few things going on in the figure fresh water flows into the tank at a rate of six liters per minute that's h2o and fluent drain out of the tank b at the same rate right there also Also, 8 liters per minute of fluids are pumped from tank A into B. That would be this one. It's going in this direction. And 2 liters per minute are floating from B into A. The liquid inside each tank is cat well stirred, so the mixture is homogeneous. That's always the assumption. If initially the brine solution in tank A is some X sub zero kilograms and in tank B some Y sub zero kilograms. So this might seem really complex. Well, it's a bit simpler than you think if you look at each tank individually. So if I look at tank A, I'm looking at X is the amount of salt or brine, whatever it is you're looking for. So in the brine solution, how much salt exists? And this is, of course, the amount of salt as well, but that's in the tank B. So let's go with A first. A, if I look at the change of rate of salt in tank A, I want the rate N. So rate N. minus rate out well let's see what's coming in and remember how we did this back in the basic problem with one tank we're looking for the rate of the actual salt not the liquid so we have six liters per minute coming in very good at a rate of since it's water zero uh, kilograms per liter plus we're getting the two liters per minute coming out of tank B. And tank B would have a Y divided by 24. That's the concentration, right? Kilograms of liters. That's the rate in. There's two of them. There could be more. Whatever you, Whatever's coming in, you just add and minus the rate out. When you look at the rate out, the only thing that's going is 8 liters per minute and add that we have the concentration of x divided by 24 that is of course kilograms per liters and dx dt is simply this is a zero it happened to be it doesn't have to be plus y divided by 12 minus uh, x divided by 3 That's the equation for A. If I do the same thing for B, for tank B, if I let dy dt, the amount coming in, well, I'm getting in 8 liters per minute. And the concentration is x divided by 24. And I'm going to stop writing those units because you know what they are now. Uh, anything else coming in? That's about it. And it's losing 2 liters per minute at a rate of x divided by 24. It's also losing 
six liters per minute at a rate of oh oh I'm sorry not X uh, this is Y of Y divided by 24 so it's giving on both ends well pretty much dy dt equals so what is that x divided by 3 minus y divided or 2y divided oh this is 2y divided by 24 and this is 6y divided by 24 that's minus 8 so that gives negative 8 y divided by 24 which makes it minus y divided by 3 so what I need to get out of those two I need to get the equations out and once I do that now I'm looking at a system of equations and systems of equations we know how to do right simple substitution I'm not gonna even use fancy linear algebra I'm just gonna use matrix uh, I'm gonna use two by twos so X prime is y divided by 12 minus X over 3 and y prime is X over 3 minus y over 3 that's really the system of equations. If I clear the fractions in each, I could say 12x prime. Actually, uh, that one, I want this one. I'm going to take this one right here and say this is 3y prime equal x minus y, or simply x equal 3y prime plus y. Now, you can solve for x or y. Uh, I suggest you solve for x always because that's how they're going to write the answer in the book. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to put that there and there. And if you recall, again, I should have done that. This was 12x prime equals y minus 4x. So I'm going to put it right there and right there. So I'm looking at 12. And I'm going to write 3y prime plus y and 3y prime plus y. You're taking a derivative of this. And the derivative is pretty much you're summing those. So that's 3y double prime plus y prime equal y minus 12y prime minus 4y. So I'm really looking at... Thirty-six y double prime plus twelve y prime equal y equal negative three y minus twelve y prime, or thirty-six y double prime plus twenty-four y prime plus three y equals zero. Divide by uh, three, twelve y double prime plus eight y prime plus y equal to zero and this is a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients so now let y equal e to the rt i'm getting e to the rt times 12 r squared plus 8 r plus uh that should be oh that's just a one I'll get the characteristic equation and this factors into 6r plus 1 into 2r plus 1. So I'm getting all together r to equal a negative 1 over 6 or a negative 1 half. So I'm getting y to equal c sub 1 e to the negative t divided by 6 plus c sub 2 e to the negative t over 2. That tells me the amount of salt in tank A at any given time. And I know also that, actually I'll get to the initial conditions in a minute. But now that I know this, I look at my substitution right there. I'll say, well look, X is really 
3 times y prime. What's the derivative of that? That is negative c sub 1 over 6 e to the negative t over 6 minus c sub 2 over 2 e to the negative t over 2 plus y plus c sub 1 e to the negative t over 6 plus c sub 2 e to the negative t over 2. So now I'm saying x is negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half. And negative 3 halves plus 1 is minus 1 half. If I bring in initial conditions, if I say y of 0 is c sub 1 plus c sub 2, and that happened to be, we called it y naught, if you remember, it's right there. And x sub 0 is going to be x naught. Of course, if that's a different number, you just plug it in. And x sub 0, x sub 0 is c1 over 2 minus c sub 2 over 2 and that happened to be x sub 0 so if i look at c sub 1 plus c sub 2 equal y naught and c sub 1 minus c sub 2 equal 2 x naught if i add those i'll get 2 c sub 1 to equal y sub 0 plus 2 x sub 0 and c sub 1 will be 2 x naught plus y naught divided by 2. And if I substitute that in the first equation, I'll get y naught plus 2x naught over 2 plus c sub 2 equal y naught, or y naught plus 2x sub 0 plus 2c sub 2 equal 2y naught. So tc sub 2 equal y sub 0 minus 2x sub 0, and you divide by 2, and there's c sub 2. So my equation would read y equal c sub 1 c sub 2 and the first one was e to the negative t over 6 and e to the negative t over 2. That's the amount of salt available in 1 at any given time. And if you want to find x of t for the second one, so it was c sub 1 divided by 2. So you multiply that by a half. You get y sub 0 plus 2x sub 0 divided by 4 e to the negative t over 6 minus multiply y2 by a half, that is y sub 0 minus 2x sub 0 divided by 4 e to the negative t over 2. That would tell me the amount of salt in the tanks at any given time. Now, later on, we're going to introduce a system of uh, spring mass, but we're going to have two springs or three, uh, two masses with three springs attached, or two and two. And this, if you take the limit as t approaches infinity, you'll notice this will approach zero since water is pouring in. On the long run, the brine amount will be. Uh, will be wiped out. The concentration will be mainly water if you let it run long enough. Now we don't cover section 5.4 but in section 5.4 they actually talk about stable, unstable. If you're going into engineering you should read that section. They, we call this a stable solution. And this is pretty much it for this section. Now the homework is not going to be out of 5.1. There's none there. I'm going to choose the two problems out of 5.2. So don't be confused.